Hello everyone, well I'm sorry I haven't been around for a couple of weeks, I've been busy doing some DIY work in this room, so yeah that explains that uh, stuff in the background. But yeah, Miss Quid's put out a video for last week about image magic, she's been trying to get into using it, which uh, it's very interesting to see what you can do with the terminal and uh, image manipulation, it's more for bulk usage. But anyway, I was looking at an article on Linux security, can Linux be used to offer more security in a working from home world, on and offline. Well, the focus is really about the security of Linux, although they don't really mention actual usability. And I think this is where it does fall down a bit because there's uh, the argument for both security and usability. And if your usability is limited, then, well, if you're working, your work's more important, so you're gonna use what you're given and that may well be Windows or Mac. But anyway, let's have a look through this article. Operational security at least seemed so much easier back when traditional 9 to 5 office life was still dominant. Talk of professionals taking their work home with them was largely metaphorical, with only the occasional instances of C-suite types dragging their laptops everywhere they went. Business hardware and systems would be shielded through physical security and isolated networks. One office or one office complex, one place to guard, entirely straightforward. I'm just thinking how far back is this sort of thinking really because pre-pandemic I was working at home. In fact, well, I've been at the company for four years now and I was working at home, well, <laughs> pretty much straight away. Now, after a year, there's seen countless businesses, some eagerly, others reluctantly, adopt the working from home model. There have been different challenges to overcome, teams are scattered and must share sensitive data across the internet, data to which other companies and fraudsters would love to gain access. When information gets out, reputations are destroyed and businesses, particularly those working entirely online, struggle to survive. Oh yes, data loss. Such a lovely thing to tar a business. And it doesn't even matter if you're the company who loses data. If someone else you're dependent on loses data, then it can tar your own business, as we're finding recently. One of the companies we work with lost a lot of our data, and it's our name that gets branded everywhere. But not much you can do about that. So with the loss of the protection of like the single office or single office complex, this is uh, perhaps why I'm hearing more about this zero trust security model instead, treating everything like the internet. Uh, but this is something I'm kind of dragging my feet about uh, learning about. Yeah, I, I will have to uh, get more of an understanding one day because yeah, I know we're moving this direction. But anyway, back to the article. The strengths of Linux for securing online activities. So while this certainly isn't a comprehensive account of what makes Linux great for online security, there are three long-standing benefits of Linux distributions that we should focus on here. They're entirely customizable, removing the need to rely on third parties. Windows is updated by Microsoft and iOS is updated by Apple. It's possible to find unofficial and signed patches but today are always going to cause issues with support services, and that's if they work at all. This means those systems must rely on those companies to react appropriately to security threats. I'm not quite sure why they think that Linux is just a single party. We have multiple parties contributing to the kernel. So that's kind of almost like an irrelevant argument. And, and if you're talking about the need of re relying on third parties, well, okay, let's say you look at Microsoft. You could use Windows as the operating system. You could use Windows Server on your servers. You could use the Azure infrastructure. You could use SharePoint. You could use Microsoft's antivirus. I mean, you could literally be trapped entirely in Microsoft's ecosystem and you would just be using one party. Perhaps I'm overthinking it there, but uh, anyway, because Linux is open source software, it doesn't rely on security updates from a single provider. Again, I said that's not true. And its ever improving compatibility option makes it stable for like to like replacement. If you want to run a VPN service, you'll find that all the leading contenders support Linux. And if you want to do something like implement a system level proxy server, you can easily load up a caching proxy like Squid through the terminal. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Uh, you can get VPNs easy enough for Linux, you can get them easy enough in Windows. And using VPN does mean it's uh, a good way to deliver like security. 
get a strong encrypted connection right into the office from any remote location, even if it's on a dodgy Wi-Fi that you don't particularly trust. Additionally, the fundamental transparency of Linux makes it relatively simple to review for potential security issues if you're willing to put the effort to steer the ship. You can achieve far more, you can achieve far more impressive levels of security through Linux systems. Okay, um, if you're willing to put the effort into reading a lot of different sources for security, perhaps. Uh, again, I'm going to have to say, like with Microsoft, if you have your monthly patch cycle, you have a standard patch cycle. You have one place to read all about all the patches. I'm trying not to compliment Windows too much, but you've got to see this from two sides. You can't just say Linux is best everything and ignore the alternatives. Even if the alternatives do have some severe privacy issues, let's say. They're updated by people who care about privacy and security. Leading software companies do care about security, but largely in the sense that their profits and reputations are affected by system vulnerabilities. Linux, on the other hand, is heavily driven by passionate enthusiasts, passionate enthusiasts who actually care about user privacy. If you're passionate, do you absolutely know everything you're doing, or are you just passionate about doing something? If you're looking to resolve a certain issue, you can inevitably find free community support to point you in the right direction. And if you want to run a cutdown OS with none of the default telemetry services that plague all mainstream alternatives, Linux isn't just your best option, it's your only practical option. Of course, if you ignore certain features of Ubuntu, certain features of KDE, admittedly those features that come disabled by default, and uh, let's think about Linux distributions like Deepin OS, which does have telemetry enabled. You know, it's never encroaching thing towards Linux, but there are, of course, Linux distributions that don't have any sort of telemetry and have stated they don't want any sort of telemetry. I'm thinking of things like Linux Mint. So throwing superior support for things like using SSH and saving and reviewing comprehensive log files, and you have a fantastic out-of-the-box option, so to speak, that will only get better the more you work with it. Hey, Windows and Mac can both use SSH. It's not just a Linux-only thing, you know. Uh, they're not high-priority targets for hackers due to their niche appeal. While it's true that Linux servers have become very popular and thus attracted attention, the same can't yet be said of the Linux desktop. So almost all attention goes towards Windows and iOS because it's far more economical to target them. Absolutely. Doesn't mean there's no vulnerabilities and no attackers going after Linux, but yes, it is not on the same scale as Windows, iOS, or Android. On top of that, you need to factor in the presence of different Linux distros, where Windows installations will only differ marginally, systems running Debian, Red Hat, and Linux Mint, can have far more substantial differences. There isn't much motivation for a hacker to target specifically Linux Mint, making them much safer. But does all this widespread selection of software actually benefit the end user? Having a lot of developers spread across a lot of different software products isn't necessarily as economical as having the same number of developers supporting a much smaller or core selection of applications. And you could have better software rather than a lot of adequate software. How Linux can secure remote working hardware. They've looked at how Linux helps support online operations, but what about offline activity, remote working? Remote working hardware still poses a threat, after all, and needs to be kept in line, well, just as it supports plenty of online security services. Linux offers a tremendous array of at-home security solutions that allow extensive configuration. For businesses that still want to use office spaces or those determined to monitor their remote working employees extremely closely, however much that seems like a bad idea. There's open source monitoring software like ZoneMinder. And I had to look at ZoneMinder and honestly that sounds quite scary. A full featured open source state of the art video surveillance software system monitor your home office or wherever you want using off the shelf hardware with any camera you can design a system as large or small as you need. Uh, right. Um, I'm sure it has its uses and illegitimate uses as well. And we also got mention of network authentication, key for remote working companies and often managed through cloud systems like Azure Active Directory. There's the free Kerberos protocol as well. And yeah, 
you can have Linux systems being able to authenticate with Windows Active Directory. So again, that can be essential for certain businesses, particularly if you're using a Linux system in a Windows heavy environment. And for those who need to keep their business hardware secure on the go, there are tools like YubiKey or Yubico Pluggable Authentication Module, PAM. This makes PAM convenient for use of hardware dongles for user authentication. I keep thinking about the YubiKey because that's what I have on those little YubiKeys. Uh, but yeah, they do have other things and just to show they do support use with Linux. The value of tech comprehension in cybersecurity. User error is one thing that even the most tightly secured systems can't fully move past. This is why social engineering is such a popular endeavor for fraudsters. Hacking an up-to-date system is complicated and risky, while convincing a poorly trained employee to volunteer their login details under false pretenses can provide quick success. And the amount of phishing emails we see is just absolutely ridiculous. And we know that employees have training every year or every couple of years, and yet they still fall for it. And we even do phishing exercises and people fall for it. So I don't know what the winning solution is for here. You know, not necessarily poorly trained, but you can always convince the fleshy weakness sat in the chair to do almost anything. Due to this, ensuring that your employees have strong awareness of security basics will do much to make your operation stronger. And though Linux has an intimidating learning curve, it's sufficiently approachable that you can make it, make it your main operating system without asking more of your workers than they can reasonably provide. It certainly helps that much can be done through the browsers at this point. If someone can use a Chromebook, they can get to grips with a Linux distribution and learning more about how Linux works and how it treats something like admin authentication will slowly but surely leave them less likely to make basic security mistakes. So I think a lot of those points are very generic really about encouraging people to use Linux. And honestly, I could shout until I'm blue in the face about the advantages of using Linux. Uh, but if people aren't gonna see these sort of videos, if they're not gonna read these sort of articles, then they're not gonna know any different and what's to incentivize them to move out of their comfort zone in Windows, iOS, or Android. And it's not to say people should use Linux. You should use whatever you're most comfortable with. There is never really a reason of why you should use Linux, but more perhaps of what Linux can do for you compared to anything else. But yeah, I certainly do use Linux for my work. Um, yeah, this is one of the documents I've worked on, and this is using SharePoint and Microsoft Office. And it was all done in the browser, which I have to say I can certainly appreciate. And I would rather make use of the browser than install any other applications on my system. That's perhaps why I use the browser version of Teams rather than installing the uh, actual uh, native version in Linux. I'd just rather not install anything extra, but uh, yeah, I certainly get a substandard experience there. Out of all the things I do in my work, it's uh, Teams that is certainly the biggest letdown and it uh, can be very difficult with meetings. Not to say it's completely impossible to use Teams in Linux, but it's definitely a substandard experience to using it on Windows. At least three quarters of my work is done through my Linux system. But yeah, I've got other things I have to do that I need to access through the VPN and I've not set that up in Linux, so I have to use my Windows laptop. But yeah, this uh, way of working at home now is very much uh, necessary and uh, I don't think we're going back into the office anytime soon in uh, most of the Western world. But is Linux the best answer? Well, only if you want it to be. Anyway, that was a look at this article on Linux security. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.